Are you looking for a pram for a new one? If you are, this video is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Denny and I'm the creator of Practical Mummy Loves Luxury. Welcome to my series of practical tips for new or expecting parents. If you like videos like these, please subscribe and click on the notification bell down below as well to make sure that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Choosing a pram can be really overwhelming and it is said that it is more difficult than choosing a car but I guess if we think about it, it kind of makes sense because we never really encounter a pram until we have to, isn't it? Versus a car that we use every day. But not to worry, I've got a few tips for you today that will make your decision process easier. At the end, I will show you the pram that I've got and tell you the reasons why I chose it. And any relevant uh, information that I have in this video will be linked in the description box below. Without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, I want to clarify the difference between a pram and a stroller. So a pram um, is able to recline to practically flat. And this is suitable for newborn because they don't have head control yet. A stroller, however, is more suitable for an older child because it tends to only be upright most of the time. But having said that, these are the traditional definitions. Nowadays, there are strollers out there that can recline as well. So in no particular order, I'm going to go through the things that you need to consider when you're choosing a pram. The first thing I'm going to mention, which is the most important thing, is how many children are you having? If you know that you're having a twin pregnancy or a multiple pregnancy, then you know that you're going to have to get a pram that will be able to carry all your babies. If you know that you're going to have a single pregnancy, are you planning to have more children after this? If you know that you have a single pregnancy now, you can have a single pram option, but with a uh, toddler option available for that pram. A toddler option means that you can add a seat or a bench in the future for your toddler to use. The next thing you need to consider is what is your budget? So set your budget, and this will probably narrow down the number of prams that you will look at. At the moment, prams can cost between 150 to 1500 Australian dollars. The third thing you need to consider is how big is your car boot? Some of these prams can be really large and can take up practically all of the space in the car boot. So it depends on how big your car is as well. Once you have developed a short list of prams that you're interested in, go to the shop, ask to try out the pram, take it to your car and fit it into the boot to see what additional room you might have because obviously you may want some space for say shopping to go next to it or even say some toys or if you have a pet you might want some room for your pet's items. The fourth thing to think of is do you want to have solid tires or inflatable tires? Inflatable tires provide a bit more suspension and therefore a smoother ride. This option may be suitable for you if you're thinking of taking this pram to places where there's lots of uneven terrain, say the beach or lots of gravel, or say if you plan to travel to really old European cities with cobbled paths where we can travel. The disadvantage of inflatable tyres is that you might have to pump it with air or if it gets a puncture, you would have to go and get it repaired. In terms of solid tyres, you don't have to reinflate them, but it may feel a bit bumpy for the baby if you're going on lots of uneven terrain. But if you're someone who's planning to take your baby to say the mall or the city, um, and the footpaths are all very even and smooth, then solid tires might be a great option for you. The fifth thing to consider is whether you want a pram with three wheels or four wheels. A pram with four wheels generally refer to prams that have their wheels set in a rectangular footprint, compared to a three wheel where their wheels are set in a triangle footprint. In general, the three wheel prams are supposed to be more maneuverable and uh, zippy compared to a four wheel pram. But I think this is much of a muchness. I've heard other moms saying that their four wheel prams can be quite maneuverable as well. When you're trying to create your shortlist, I suggest um, looking at some three wheel options and some four wheel options and going to the store and testing them out yourself to see if it's a big deal to you. The sixth thing you need to consider is stowage. How much do you want this pram to carry? Do you intend for it to carry your baby and lots of other shopping with you? And if that's the case, you will probably need a pram that has quite a lot of stowage. The seventh thing is how heavy is this pram? Are you able to easily lift it in and out of the car boot by yourself or are you always going to have to have someone help you with it? The eighth thing is do you want the pram to have a front facing feature? A front facing feature means that the baby is facing you while you're pushing the pram. You may have read that in the first three months they recommend for the baby to be facing mom or dad 
when the pram is being pushed because otherwise it can seem a bit isolating for the baby. It is also said that if you are facing your baby, it will help bonding. I'm kind of on the fence about this recommendation. However, I personally did have a forward facing option and I chose that option because I wanted to have the opportunity to continually speak to my daughter because I know that's going to develop her language skills. And obviously because I could see her right in front of me, it made it really easy for me to check that everything was going okay. The ninth thing is do you want height adjustable handles? So the height can be adjusted for uh, a little mum and a tall dad. And yeah, I guess it can be vice versa as well. I'm kind of 50-50 on this one. I am five foot one or 152 centimeters. My husband is six foot one or 182 centimeters. There is a huge height discrepancy between the both of us, but our pram is not height adjustable. I think when you get a pram with fixed handlebar heights, they tend to be fixed at a level that's for an average height person. So whether it's myself or my husband pushing the pram, neither of us have really noticed that it's bothersome. It might be important for maybe a family that travels a lot and they would push the pram over long distances and perhaps very uneven terrain. I guess in that manner, it would make sense for the pram to be adjusted in the most ergonomic manner to the person who's pushing the pram. The tenth thing to consider is do you want a travel system? A travel system refers to a pram that comes along with a capsule or a car seat and you can buy them as a set. In those situations, I think sometimes you can get a good price because you're essentially buying uh, two items from the same company. I didn't go with this option because I was set on getting the pram that I have now and I managed to work around it. And I'll talk more about that later on when I show you my pram. And now that you know all the features that you need to look out for in a pram, you can decide on what your priorities are and what would be your deal breakers. I'm gonna take you now to this website called prams.com.au. It has this awesome pram chooser, which gives you a short list of prams that have certain features, including their prices on as well. So here we are on prams.com.au. As you can see, there is a lot of information available on this website. I'm gonna take you here to the pram chooser. So here is the pram chooser. And if you scroll down here, you're able to select the features of the pram that you would like. So say here, I decide to go for a single option with three wheels. I scroll down and a list of options have come up along with their prices as well. And if I scroll down here, here is my Baby Jogger City Mini, which is the pram that I own. And there's all its specifications here. So the weight, and it's a single pram, it's got three wheels, it has suspension, it does not have reversible seating, but I will talk more about that later in my video. And say you are looking at these pram features and you're not particular about some of these features, say you don't mind whether the pram has three wheels or four wheels, you can go ahead and untick three wheels and see what happens when you take four wheels. And then you'll see the options that turn up and you can compare the prices and you can include these prams in your shortlist and then you can take your shortlist to the store and have a hands-on experience. In Adelaide, I find that the store that has most options to play with is Baby Bunting. I strongly advise that when you go to the store to go and look at these prams, bring your shortlist and also bring your list of priorities and deal breakers. Because when you go into store, it's really easy to be overwhelmed by the amount of choices and you can also get distracted by another well-meaning parent who might have different priorities and needs to yourself or another salesperson who has no idea what you need. So now I'm going to take you through my pram, which is the Baby Jogger City Mini. So just the plain City Mini, not the GT. And it's going to appear on screen right now. So for me, I knew that I wanted to be able to take my baby out on my own and I needed a pram that was going to be fuss free. So the pram had to be as light as possible. The Baby Jogger City Mini is one of the lightest on the market and it weighs about seven and a half kilograms. Some prams on the market can weigh up to 12 kilograms. So it's really easy to open and close. To close it down, I can do it with just one hand. I would lift this tab right here and it will just collapse. I also find that it is light enough for me to lift in and out of the boot. It also only takes up half my boot space, which is less than some of the other prams on the market that I looked at. To open it back up, I'll just take it out from my boot. I will unlock this lock on the right hand side here and it opens up just like so. I fasten up these red tabs here 
to make sure it doesn't close up randomly. It also has just one foot operated brake, which I find really handy because there are prams that has a brake on every wheel. That means you have to activate or deactivate four brakes when you want to stop or go. And I find that really inconvenient. This foot brake though is not particularly sandal friendly. So if you haven't got covered toe shoes, it can be quite uncomfortable to unlock it with your foot. However, even when I'm wearing covered toe shoes, I tend to step on the other side of the brake to unlock it so that I don't destroy the top of my shoe. I also love the large canopy, which is great for really hot or rainy days. It also reclines to almost flat, so it's great for baby sleeping on a go. And recently I discovered a mother who changes her baby's nappy in her city mini. I wish I knew that myself back then. <laughs> There's also an air vent on the back here, which allows for ventilation, but on rainy days, you can also cover it up like this. It has solid wheels, so there's no need to inflate the tires. So one of the disadvantages of the Baby Jogger City Mini is that it's more tippable. As you can see from the side on view that the center of gravity is forward in relation to the whole pram. The good thing about this is that it's easy to get up curbs because you can tip it backwards really easily. But it can be more tippable if an older child then decides to climb up the back of the pram or if you hang too many things on the back. There is a sign on this specific pram that says that nothing should be hung from the handles of this pram. It has three wheels which makes it really easy to maneuver but a three wheel pram is also less stable than a four wheel pram and if it's placed perpendicular to the gradient of a slope it can tip sideways. The storage of the Baby Jogger City Mini is also small. Because of this bar that's here, it's really hard to get bulky things in and out. Sometimes I might try and put something through the side of the compartment, but it's still kind of fiddly if you need to take a bulky item in and out. So I would really only put something in there that I don't have to access frequently, for example, my shopping. I tend to carry my nappy bag on my back. If I was carrying my baby in the carrier, I would then place my nappy bag in the seat of the pram. I've heard some mothers carry some small loose items inside this compartment though. Also, contrary to its name, this baby jogger model does not jog. That's something that doesn't really bother me, but if you're a jogger and you need that function in your pram, this is not the pram for you. So the City Mini retails for about 500 Australian dollars, which is great for what it offers. I purchased mine in 2017 for about 360 Australian dollars because I waited for a sale before I bought it. In terms of accessories for the pram, they're extra if you want them. I have a parent console here and I think this is super useful. Baby Jogger has their own parent console but mine is a more affordable one from eBay and I'll link it in the description box below. It holds my coffee, my water bottle, my phone, so it's super handy. Now remember that this pram is tippable, so if you're going to attach this to your pram, please do this at your own risk. And as you can see here, I've got a pram liner on my pram. I highly recommend these because sometimes the baby might have a poo or a pee accident inside the pram and you can just remove the liner to wash it separately. These ones I got off eBay and I'll link some in the description box below. I also bought this tray for my little one and it attaches just like so and it carries some of her snacks and her water bottle. From memory, this tray retailed for about a hundred Australian dollars. So as I said before, I did have a forward facing option for my baby when she was really young. I'll put this on the screen. I don't have this anymore, so I'm unable to show this to you. This is the Britex Unity Carrier, which is a capsule. In order to attach this capsule to my City Mini, I bought some adapters. One of the advantages of the City Mini is that it comes with a lot of adapters for different capsule brands. So I bought my capsule separately in 2017 and having a look at the retail prices that are online now in May 2020, it's going for about 300 Australian dollars. Overall, I still really, really love my baby jogger and I think that's because I made an effort to decide on what features I want in a pram before buying one. The thing that bothers me most about it is that it can't carry my nappy bag, but for all the other conveniences that it comes with, I'm really happy with this purchase. Now I'm going to finish off with a couple of tips for you. Tip number one, if there is someone that you trust who is offering you their pram for free and you know that they're not going to give you a faulty pram, 
I 100% suggest taking it. Sometimes you don't really know what features you want in a pram until you use it. If the pram is a bit manky, perhaps get it sanitized a little bit, uh, put a pram liner down and let your little one use it. Once you've tested the pram for a few months and you find that you still like it, you can decide to keep it and not buy a new one, which means that you've saved all this money or you can go and buy a brand new one. But if you don't like it, then you know what other features to look for in a pram that you want. My second big tip is to do your research early and wait for a sale. Baby Bunting has quite frequent sales and there are other online websites that go on sale on a regular basis as well. And that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.